Hi YouTube! Today I want to show you how to send a signal from a kernel space module to a user space application. And for this purpose I've prepared a little bit here, so I've connected a button to my Raspberry Pi. And I want to write a program which will send a signal to a user space application whenever the button is pressed. So what do I need for this? First, I need a Linux kernel module which will set up the GPO and the interrupt. And then I need an IO control command to allow my user space application to register to this kernel module. And when I need an IO command, um, I also need um, a device file and the device number. And last but not least, I will write the code in the interrupt service routine to send the signal to the kernel. So, as this is a little bit too much for one video, I have already prepared a little bit. But to all the stuff I don't show you today, I will put links um, in the description of the video where you can find videos where I explain various things. And I would also recommend you to check out my Linux Drive tutorial playlist. So now let me navigate into my Linux Drive tutorials folder. And here you can see I've added a new, um, new folder, 15 sending signals. And in here I have already prepared a little bit. So let's look what's in that folder. So we have the gpoirqsignal.c file, which is the source file for my kernel module. I have a make file to build the kernel module. And I have a test application, which will be our user space application, which will receive the signal. Okay, so let's start with looking at the kernel module. So you see, I have already added some, um, some includes here and here we have our interrupt service routine which only prints out a message to the kernel slug. Down here I have added a close function for my um, device number and here I am defining the file operations. So what's in here? Here we have the initialization function. This will set up the, inter the GPIO, set the direction to um, input the bounds, the GPIO, and here we are assigning um, our interrupt service routine to our interrupt number. And down here I am registering a character device number, which I will need for communication. And down here I have the uninitialize function, which will free the IRQ, the GPIO, and the device number, the reserve device number. Okay. So the first thing I will do is I will add an IO control command for, um, for registering the user space application to the kernel. And one thing, before I start, I want to point out one important thing. This header here, Linux slash chat slash signal dot edge is important because we will need this for all the signal sending and signal setup stuff. Okay, so let's start by adding a new IO control function. Brief IO control for registering the, um, the user space app to the kernel module. So, and here we have an static long int. I will call the function myo control and the arguments are struct file file um, unsigned command and unsigned long arc which are the arguments. Okay and if we are using IO control we have to use we have to define the IO control command. So let me just do this. Global variables and defines for, for um, user space app registration. So I need a new magic number here. I will call it register U app. And here I will create a new magic number for an IO control command with no additional arguments. 
and here I will use R and G to um, get my magic number. And we need a place to store the um, yeah the process ID and all the information about our user space application. So let me add a new struct here. Stru task struct struct task, and I will set it initially to now this pointer here. So this pointer will store all the information about our user space application. Okay, so <clears throat> down here. I will check what command was passed and if the command is um, register uapp I will use the function get current to get the um, user space apps information and let's print out something to our kernels module gpo rq signal um, user space app with PID has is registered. Okay. And here the task um, struct has a field called PID, which is the process ID of our user space application. Yeah, and that's almost for the IO control command. All I have to add here is I have to return zero to indicate everything went fine. Okay, so now let's um, add the IO control um, function to our file operation struct. So, okay, cool, this should work now. And now we have to unregister the app somewhere, and I will do this in the close callback function. So if task not equals to null, I will set the task to null. Okay. This is a little bit dirty because if two um, applications open up the um, device file at once, there could be a mess up, but for this demonstration, it's okay to make it this way here. Okay, and now let's take care about the signal sending after we get after we have the information about our user space application here. So find signal sending. I will define the six number which I want to use, which is 44 here. And here I will add a struct from the type sick info and I will call it info. So and now if task is not equal to now, we can send a signal to the user space application. First thing I will do is I will initialize um, these info structs with all zeros. Okay. And I can set some values. So let's see. Sick number is sick number. So here we are assigning the sick number. And here as the code is um, yeah, is um SEQ. So I understand this is the method over which um, the over which the signal is sent and so signal queue is the standard method here. And now let's send the um, signal. For sending the signal, we can use the function of send sig info. As an argument, we need the number of signal we want to send. Then we need um, our info struct. But one important thing here is we have to typecast it to kernel sig info. I guess because this kernel sig info is more safe and that's the reason why it was chosen here. And the last argument is the um, yeah the information about the process to which we want to send the signal which is stored in our task struct and if the return value is smaller than zero and error occurred and I will print it out here. You know, Q signal sending signal. Okay, but that should be it. 
that's all we need to add here. So let's try to build the code here. And let's see how much mistakes I've made. Okay, quite a lot. Invalid uh, story. Okay. Maybe I just forget. Okay, yeah. Here I forget to close this. Right here. Maybe this was the error. Let's try it again. Okay, now it looks good. So now let's insert our kernel module. And now let's create um, our our device um, our device file. So we I will create a device file called dev irq signal. It should be a uh, character device with the major number 64 and the minor number 0. Okay, and forget about the evac here. Okay, and now if I look to dev RQ signal, yeah, I have this device file right here. Okay, and now let's take a look at the test app. So here we have already set up everything to receive a signal with the sig signal handler here. It will just print out signal receive, but I will change this to button was pressed. And here I'm registering the signal handler for the signal number 44 here. And what I have to add here is the registration of um, of the user space application to the kernels module. So the what's the first thing I will do is I will print out the process ID of our user space application so we can double check with the kernels log. So um, get pip is the function I need here. And now let's open the device file. Is open um, open def irq signal and I will open it with read in the file with read permissions only if if d is smaller than zero close uh, mm, not open device file okay and now let's um, register app to kernel module so here I will use the function IO control um, FD. so this file descriptor now I have to um, get the magic number yeah so I will just copy paste this here here we go let's close this okay so our magic numbers register uip and I don't need to pass any arguments here and if this is smaller than zero an error occurred no if this is bigger than zero an error occurred error Ring, which is ring, um, app close fd and return minus one. Okay, and that should be it. So let's. I will try to compile my test application. Okay, so now let's try to run our test application. Read it out. Okay, so this is our process ID, and now we'll press the button, yeah, and I get the messages here. So the sending of the signal was successful, and now let's do one more thing. Let's check if, and we see here user space app with process ID um, 32311 is registered, and that's exactly the process ID of our user space application. And we can see here the printouts from the interrupt service routine. So great, we achieved to send um, a, a signal from a kernel module to a user space application. So that's great. And as always, I will upload my sources to my GitHub repository. You can find the link in the description. So all which is left to say is thank you for watching and I hope you've learned something. So bye and I hope I will see you in my next video.